We are back with the third and final part of my interview with Kathy Bird. She shares more pearls of wisdom from her life's experience, where she uncovers that she also lived a previous life as Lou Gehrig's mother. Hear how the magic aligned for this miraculous story to be heard by the world. Kathy also shares how key influencers like Wayne Dyer and Jack Canfield got on board to support the messages Kathy and her son have brought forward into the world. Don't miss out on all the show segments and hear more incredible stories of my guests on future episodes when you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and Facebook page, Beth Bell Live. We're back with mm-hmm. Kathy Bird, and we were just about to talk about the movie, right? So you're right. writing the screenplay, but lots of interesting things have happened. So you basically have gone to, I have a son who's telling me really interesting details, right. to should I believe him, right. to oh my goodness, I really believe him because he's telling me stuff that like couldn't be made up, right. to uh, you know getting professionals involved that tell right. you, yes, in fact, there are um, previous lives of a lot of young children mm-hmm. that they remember at a certain point in their life. Um, and I also want to talk about that because there's right. a point where that veil kind of comes in and becomes a lot less thin, and so they don't have access right. to that same information. So right. we didn't touch on that, which we will. Um, to your own self-hypnosis, which is right. where you really start to feel, like, validated. Right. Like, this stuff isn't being made up. Like, there's something here. Right. Uh, then you get other people that are very interested in the book, so much so that you get endorsements for the movie. So let's talk a little bit about like, yeah. how does this fall into the hands of like the Wayne Dyers and the Jack Canfields of the world? Right, so there's been a lot of you know very s- synchronistic events, yeah. um, but I would say going back to before I even wrote the book, the biggest thing I had to overcome, which is what I'm still dealing with, is overcoming the fear. So fear is, is a big, thing to overcome then and even now you're saying correct yeah Yeah. fear because in your mind it's always worse than it's ever going to be in real life yeah so all I could envision was like my son playing baseball at 10 years old and people going oh look at Lou Gehrig you know and putting that extra pressure on him okay Um, and we've had a little bit of that but you know what it's it rolls off of him it rolls off of me we're kind of like we know what the message is so it's never as bad as you think it is. But what happened with the movie is I had to go through it all over again because mm-hmm. I had the courage. Right. Okay, if this light goes out, we know it's Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, now we're in paranormal. We've got lots of others with us here right Angels now. Angels. Yes. God, no. So we were talking about um, the, the movie and right. that all kind of resurfacing again about the fear. Right. And I think about... If I'm hearing you correctly, it's about the judgment of others that starts to come in. Right. And when it comes to your children, so what happened with the movie is we got very close. We were three weeks away from filming it, and you get on this train that you can't get off, right? And so, you know, what really scared me was putting my kids in the spotlight for the book was one thing, but doing it on the movie was a whole other thing. Yes. So I had grave concerns about putting my kids into the spotlight over a movie that I didn't feel had the spiritual message of why I wrote the book. Right. So I kind of had made a huge decision and I walked away from a big lump sum of money and said, you know what? It's not about money. It's not about time. It's not about any of this. Like just walk away and go regroup and get back to the message of why you wrote the book. Yeah. And what does that main message of why you wrote the book? The main message, well, basically that that love can surpass one lifetime um, yeah. and these soul connections that we have and and just for people to look at life as a choice, you yeah. know, like coming down into these physical bodies so we can enjoy all of the beauty that life has to offer. Yeah. And kind of, you know, in some ways, like taking life a little lighter and, and just loving each other. Mm. It's that simple. I love right? that. I love that. Now, before um, you went through all of this with the movie, there was that time frame where, where I, I believe Jack Canfield picked up your book. Right. And what happened there, and how did it get in the hands of Jack, and why was he so compelled to support this? Right. Well, it started with Wayne Dyer, okay. and he was the first original person that actually got me my publishing deal. And then two months later, he passed. Oh. So I almost feel like Wayne brought me Jack, because then Jack became my new mentor and, yeah. and and supporter of the book yeah and he did the book trailer for me and he did the foreword yeah, but he oh. did do that and and he has a real understanding of 
this whole school of thought way beyond what I, you know, I'm a newbie at this compared mm-hmm. to you guys. <laughs> so, you know, it was great for Christian to meet him and, and, and have his reality validated that like, oh, it's not crazy. And yeah. There is something to this. Yeah. And Jack's a very busy man. Right. So to see that it stopped him in his tracks, I think it sounds like even he was surprised when he right. picked this up and couldn't put the book down. Right. And the book is A Boy Who, The Boy Who Knew Too Much, Boy Who Knew Kathy Too Burt. Much. So, oh. we'll, yeah, give you a plug there because everyone that I have had read the book who listened to our last episode that was on the radio show, all my family and friends, I have raved about this book and they've, they've read it from front to back. Yeah. My mom has given yeah. her book to so yeah. many people like just to keep extending the Amazing. message that's there and it's changed people's lives yeah. because yeah. it opens up, I think, a whole new concept about being a human, right. having a soul, right. where do we come from? Right. Where are we going to? Yes. And you know, it's just like, why are we here? Why are we here? <laughs> why are we here? <laughs> and you know, I think it's all, of course, I'm a little biased, but I think it's all about pollinating the planet with love. And I do right? too. That's my bottom line is that life is a game, mm-hmm. much like baseball is a game. And the one who loves the most wins. And it's the same as this message, yeah. right? It all comes down to one thing. Yeah, it is. And it's about connection and community and community and really living your life's passion and purpose which you are now doing unexpectedly you know you're a realtor by trade right um, you have all these other skill sets you worked at um, right. fo- you know massive foundations right. um, and now your focus is still on real estate but right. it's also on getting this message out the at message. the same time which is sort of a juggling act and oh by the way you're a mother of two children right and ironically I never wanted to be a writer and I never yeah. wanted to be a screenwriter but yeah. really to get the message into the screenplay I had to step up and go okay I can do this so I have a screenwriting partner and we're writing our own screenplay and we're doing it yeah. you know it's like when you necessity right yes, yes well and that's actually how we met because right. I was in my shop Blossom Bliss in Bali and mm-hmm. you walked in the door and we just started talking and mm-hmm. I remember I remember how you were telling me I felt like there was a little hesitation yes. in in what you were saying because you weren't sure what my reaction was going to be. Right. Of course I was like of course your son was Lou Gehrig, you know. Right. Like, <laughs> I was always embarrassed. I was Tell like, "Oh." <laughs> yeah. And and then it just felt like we had this incredible connection like the universe divinely, you know, and brought us placed together. us because I think even that day you said like right. you were supposed to be writing but you just said I'm just going to take a walk. And, and your beautiful store and the flowers <sighs> outside and like magical. Yeah, magical. it was. It was all magical. Every day, fresh flowers, inviting people in. Yeah, yeah. So we... So Tell we, them what you did on your flowers in front of the store. Oh, yes. We put the little... We put love with marigold flowers written on the concrete. Yeah, it was really fun because it, it brought a lot of people together and it brought community and connection. And I think what was so yeah. great is... It, people from all around the globe, you yeah, know, so incredible. Um, yeah. And monkeys, there were monkeys there too. Yes, and there's <laughs> monkeys. It was on Monkey Forest Road. I mean, how could there not be monkeys? Okay, so um, I want to talk a little bit about the um, how you actually got the book written. So, how did you meet Wayne Dyer? Wayne Dyer, I went to a writing retreat in Maui okay. um, through Hay House. It was okay. a writer's workshop, and I. I got to meet him and I did it for writers out there. I did an amazing thing, which Wayne taught me about manifesting. And so whenever, before Wayne would ever start a book, he would do the book cover. So I already have my book cover designed and it's exactly the cover of my book. Mm -hmm. And I did the back with the whole little blurb. So when I met Wayne, I had that and it, it's, that's something like I've told it to so many people and I've seen so many books published where the, you know, the, the initial vision came to life. Yeah. Yeah. So I met Wayne and, and it was right up his alley. The most amazing thing is that he was just finishing a book. His very last book he ever wrote was um, Memories of Heaven. And it was stories, a compilation book of stories that people had sent him of children's. There was a whole chapter on children's past lives. Mm. There was a whole chapter on invisible friends, talking to angels, stories that parents and grandparents, they had thousands of submissions. So really when Wayne passed, yeah. I had this message that it was my job to pick up the torch where Wayne had left off yeah. to carry on this message of, of the, all of the just wisdom that we can get from children. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And, and do you feel like Wayne is still with you here today? Yes. He keeps turning off the lights and the TV and <laughs> you've never had the TV go, go off I know. before. <laughs> it's crazy. Crazy stuff. It's energy and but we love it. come through. Yes. Of course we love it. <laughs> Wonderful. So. Mm-hmm. 
What pearls of wisdom do you have for parents who have children that may be sharing interesting thoughts or memories mm -hmm. um, that feel a little uncomfortable with how to how to explore this if to explore? Like, what would be your pearl of wisdom, knowing what you know now? Right. Um, the 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 thing that Dr. Tucker tells people is, you know, don't ask leading questions. You never want to lead a child down that path okay. or hope that your child has this, you know, like yeah. it's something, but let them express it when they feel like they have a desire to. Right. And I would say write it down too because you forget and they forget. Write so it down, yes. Great. Write it down. Simple advice, but really good advice. Right. Right. Or even in today's world, you can transcribe it probably as you're right. recording it at the same right. time. I know I wish I had more recordings. I have some, but at the time, you don't know when it's coming and you don't think much of it at the time. Yeah. 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 So. When, when children are having this memory, there's sort of a window. Let's talk about that. Right. So what do they say? Like five, six, seven is like the ages I think I've heard right. where right. the veil right. becomes quite thick at that point right and they don't necessarily get into that energy do you know anything more right. about that and why well, and does it sort of end amazingly it's the same for like invisible friends too okay you know like you know little kids that are like don't sit on that swing Johnny's there you know mm -hmm. by the time they're five six yeah. in school age they're more assimilated the veil is thinner I mean it's thicker and yeah. they're more assimilated into their now and not yeah. so able to access that other dimension yeah well and it seems yeah. natural that that would and need to happen because right. at some point I think you also felt like I really want Christian to be Christian to be as Christian. opposed to be Lou Gehrig because that yeah. sort of is a difficult place to sort of feel to right. be two different people right. when you're right. in a human existence right. as Christian so right. that was probably a, a divinely guided you know door to close mm -hmm. in a sense um, it's like it's a relief yeah when it does happen yeah, opinion. like it is a relief. Why do you think that some children, like Christian, are chosen to have the veil be thinner? And maybe say, while you think about that, um, referring to the veil, mm -hmm. um, it's our ability to remember back to source, right. remember back to previous lives, remember back right. to different dimensions. Um, right. So when I say veil, that's that's what I... I mean okay. is to be able to have this 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 greater knowing accessibility and access right to our existence right right beyond right. just what we think we are as this human so right. why do you think Christian was chosen and why are other children chosen to right. have that veil be thinner or does every child do you think have this this yeah. really thin veil but we just all we shut it down I think every human being has it you know people go to psychics to get advice and but I feel like we all have that ability you know we all have that inner voice right yes I like the way I like the way you put that um, but specific to children to children and you know, why certain children and not other children yes mm, that's a really good question you know like the not other children part I don't I'm having a hard time with that because I think like some of it just isn't listened to you know yeah. what I mean like I'd say that there's a ton more you can see it from he put out this thing like send me your letters about your kids mm -hmm. talking about this other dimension or any of this mm -hmm. he got hundreds of thousands of letters and really remarkable stuff like like one woman um, she had had a miscarriage but she never told her son and one day she was singing a song to him and the little boy knew the song and she said how do you know this song and he said Remember, mommy, you used to sing it to me all the time. Like it, it was just like a yeah amazing. Yeah. You know, these kids have these memories yeah. and. Well, okay. So why do you think it matters what we lived in a previous life? Because some people, I'm going to be, I'm going to play right. the skeptical thing, right. which I'm not. Right, I'm skeptical. So well, that's a good. You know, <laughs> I'm the well, perfect well, who, person. To what ask. does it matter if you were <laughs> Queen Elizabeth in a previous life or you're right. Lou Gehrig or you know, like right. like right. how much time should we put towards right. this exploration? And like, what's what the point it, of it? Right, like what what's the point? I totally agree with that because I am very much about how we are here to live this lifetime. And when people say, "Oh, you only live once," I totally agree because you only live this lifetime once. Okay, so it shouldn't be a crutch. It shouldn't be something that like, you know, oh, we live a million lives and, you know, it's, it's, the message is deeper and bigger. So it, well, I, I really like that you brought in the veil, you know, for us as humans across all of our age, right? right. It isn't something that's just about kids. 
But I like to kind of explore that kid part of it because we haven't typically built up our ego mind right. so strongly right. to, to sort of clamp down on it. Right. And I also think you made a great point that, you know, it is a lot about parents or the loved ones that are around the child right. that install a level of fear or that's dismissal. different. Dismissal. dismissal. That's dismissal. the right word. Yeah. yeah. Around it. And, um, and it does seem like there's a lot of value in understanding a previous life mm -hmm. um, because it, it has filled in a lot of the blanks for you guys. I think right. you may or may not have gotten to this profound mission that you and Christian are both clearly on, which is to help people understand eternal love. Mm -hmm. And so, and I also feel like, you know, I, I, I as I interviewed Christian, it, his, his comfort with being famous, and this isn't about being famous. That's right, not the important right, point here. Right. The important point here is that he has a message to the world and right. he's comfortable sitting in this chair on this right. show, telling right. people what he believes. Right. And he also has this incredible ability to compassionately not care to what take other punches. people yeah. think. Yeah. And that to me gives me goosebumps. And to not be not have animosity towards that. Like when people do make yes. fun of him, you know, we get it at baseball games. Like dads will be yes. like, You got Lou Gehrig pitching to you, hit a bomb you know, and he takes it with a sense of humor, you know, yeah. like, thank God. I hope yeah. it never changes. Yeah. No, but. he seems like a very grounded young man. So how do you see your role yeah. as his mother, you know, supporting him moving forward with being Christian, but right. also having this, this legacy of a previous life behind him? Right. I mean, very, we're very much into the day to days of like, like right now we're really working on his grammar because he hates punctuation and he doesn't, you know, I tell him it's never going to change. Just learn yeah. it, you know? And yeah. so we're very much in just like living this life and doing what we got to do. And we have baseball later today and it's just not something we think about every day, mm -hmm. but it's part of who we are. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's clear the the yeah. light that you guys both exude and the the purpose that you're here to uh, to help shift and change the world and assist in pollinating the planet with love. So I'm so happy That's to have you on about. this journey. That's what it's all, all about. All right, are there any final pearls of wisdom that come to mind to share out to the world? Um, just to keep loving and to keep hope. That was another big message yeah. of the of the book is to have hope and have faith. And one one motto that I've taught my kids, that like Christian wrote it in a paper recently and it says if you believe in yourself and you are working to do good in the world, the magic of life will reveal itself to you. Oh, I love that. And we just were talking about the magic this morning mm -hmm. and living in the magic. So what an incredible story to tell, and I can't wait to see what happens, what blossoms. But most importantly, I'm just so grateful for this Thank moment you. of now. Thank you. Yay. All right. Well, you may or may not know that I have a pollinating love mudra. I'm wondering if you'd be willing to do it with me Absolutely. on the show because it's a, it's a way to connect and I believe okay. it's a way to connect um, at a soul level, okay. but the main goal is just to share unconditional love um, together. Lovely. So it only requires four things, your heart, okay. your hands, okay. your eyes, okay. and most importantly, the yes. intention to give and receive love. Okay. Okay. So it's very simple. It's you can do it in 20 seconds or less okay. or longer. So we take our hands, put our fingertips together, and then put our wrists together, and then imagine this to be a little lotus flower, okay? So the lotus flower, let's put up to our breastbone right here, fourth chakra, and then I do like to close my eyes just for a moment and think about someone, something that you're incredibly grateful for, something that brings you peace, joy, love. Feel it in your heart and then just see that love going into the little lotus flower. You might even feel some warmth between your hands. And then when you're ready and you've got that love inside the lotus flower, open your eyes. And now we're going to share it with each other. So we're going to blossom our little lotus flower. So just gently raise your lotus and your middle fingers come open, your index fingers come open, and your thumbs come open. And then we just go like this and share it with each other. And then out into the world. Yes, the sprinkles of bliss to everyone. <laughs> and we come back to Namaste, which is I honor the divine in you, my dear. I honor the divine in you. Yay. Thank all you. right. Wishing you all bliss so that you too can help in pollinating the planet with love. 
Blossom Bliss products are designed to help empower pure love and purpose in your life. It's through the power of words, flowers, and symbols that our products assist you in creating a blissful life. The power of words in our mini mantra word bar necklaces assist you in setting and blossoming your personal intentions. The affirmation cards leverage the power of flowers by providing daily inspiration. And the power of symbols in our life journey bracelets are great reminders of the things that bring us peace, joy, and love. Products are made and blessed in Bali with love by Balinese artisans who work with empowered hearts. When you purchase jewelry with a bee charm, we donate to save the bees. Join us in pollinating the planet with love. Go to our website, BlossomBlissBally.com. Again, that's BlossomBlissBally.com. I hope you've enjoyed this episode with Kathy Bird as she shared incredible details of her life and the revelations of her son's previous life. If you haven't already, please listen in to her son Christian's episode where he shares his perspective. He started expressing his memories at age two, and while he no longer has active memories as Lou Gehrig, he has a big message he is destined to share with the world. Thanks for joining in to hear the life journey lessons and pearls of wisdom of me and my guests. Be sure to hear all three segments when you subscribe to my YouTube channel and receive reminders to upcoming shows and segments. The full episode is also available at bethbell.me show. If you found this inspiring, please give this episode a like and a big thumbs up. If you want to hear more, follow me or hit the bell for reminders at Beth Bell Live on Facebook and YouTube. I'd love to have you join the mission of pollinating the planet with love.